Hello and welcome to the simple overview of Office 365 Online. Today we're going to go over the aspects of mail and calendar in your Office portal. Uh, but before we do that, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Willis. I'm the marketing coordinator here at Omega Computer Services. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to email me and I will answer your questions to the best of my abilities. Uh, my email is alex, A-L-E-X, at omegacomputerservices.com. With that being said, let's get into this. So first off, to get to your portal login, go to Google, type in Office 365, and you'll get this guy that says sign into your account. Go ahead and click there, but I recommend adding this to your bookmark so it's easy accessible from your toolbar. So we'll go ahead and click here, send you to this screen. My information's already filled in because I have been here before, but the first time you'll fill in yours and um, you can go ahead and click sign in. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, now that we're all signed in here, this is your main screen, your dashboard, where all your apps are. We're actually only going to get into two of these today, which is mail and calendar. We might get into a little bit of people, but those are just your contacts. You can go ahead and explore these as much as you want. There's a lot of good stuff in all of these. So let's go ahead and get into mail. Okay, now that we're in the mail section of Office 365, I'm going to go over this in three sections, really. I'll start off with the folders, and then we can go to the inbox, and also how you preview email and what you can do from in there, and then also how to draft and send an email out. So starting with the folders, we'll go through these. Your inbox is your received mail. Clutter is a system that Microsoft uses to learn your email tendencies. So I don't read these emails, and I just delete them right away. So Microsoft understands that and sends them straight to Clutter. So it is a good way to clear out your inbox. Next is sent items, items that you have sent out to others. Drafts are uncomplete emails that you can go back at a later time and either finish or delete them. And then deleted items. So that does it for your favorites. Those are your main ones, really. And then I have this, which is more folders that I have created, which I'll show you how to do right now. So you come up to folders, click this little add sign, and for the sake of this, I'm just going to call it example, click enter, and now that's folder, that folder is there, and I can um, add emails to it by simply clicking and dragging. There are other, way, other ways you can add emails, which I'll show you in a little bit. But that is really it for the folder section, um, so now we can move on to the inbox side. All right, so for the inbox, I brought up this email that has uh, the images blacked out, so I want to show you guys how to work with those. But before we get to that, if you go over to this email and hover over it with your cursor, you see these four icons pop up. One is delete item. Uh, the next one is mark as unread. You can flag or you can pin it to the top of your email so you can remind yourself that that is important. So now we can go into this little preview section of the email. Uh, this email is from HubSpot, which is a software we use in the marketing department. And we like their stuff, so we want to see their images that are in their email. Right now they're blacked out for safety reasons and security. Uh, so you have two options here. You can help protect privacy, and some of the features in this message are blocked for that reason. So you can click here to enable it once, or you can tell your Office 365 to remember this sender and click here so they always download those images and content that's in that email. So since it is HubSpot, we're going to click here, and it's going to download their images. So you can see everything that pops up, and it looks like a much nicer email now. So that's just one thing to do in there. Uh, another thing is unsubscribe. So if we wanted to um, request to get off their list, we can unsubscribe here. You can like this email. You can reply straight from inside this preview window. And then you can click the drop down to do a lot more. So you can reply all. You can forward it to others. You can delete. You can mark as junk. You can mark as a, a phishing attack. You can unsubscribe, flag, all this good stuff but we're going to get out of there for now and then we're going to move up to here so this is create new email we'll get to that in a second this is delete the email once again you can send this to your archive folder say if you want to look at it later um, you can send it there you can mark it as junk you can drop this down once again report it as a phishing attack or unsubscribe you can sweep which is a set of template rules that office has in here so there is delete all messages from this folder from this sender. So it will always delete these if you keep getting them. Even if you're requesting you're unsubscribing for some reason, you keep getting these emails. This is a good thing to have to just delete so you don't have to go through and deal with it. 
Also other things like always keep the latest message and delete the rest so you're keeping the newest one and getting rid of the rest to so say if it's some type of recurring email. Uh, there's a, some other rules that we're going to get to in a second but that's just a few of those. You can click move to. This will move to any folder that you want it to. This is useful for say you have a department of marketing or you have an operations department. You can create folders and always send those addresses to a certain folder. So say if you have a couple people in your marketing team, you'll always get those emails to your marketing folder so you know where they're at. And you do that by clicking move all email from. So if you get an email from a user, um, it will mark that email and send it to marketing because it knows the rule that you put in place. You can also create new folders from here and delete items. Categories. We are the marketing department at Omega, so we have all these great color schemes in here. We have blog, social media, promotions, and you can mark emails on colors. We also use them for calendar so we know what is which in the calendar content. So I'm going to go ahead for the sake of this and just mark this as social media. You see that purple box pops up to the side and also at the top of the email so you know what category it is in. Next is these three little dots. A lot of the stuff that we've already talked about, the mark is on red, pin, you can flag it to make it important. Um, mark is complete if uh, someone sends you a task. But this is what we want to get into is create a rule. This is the nerdier side of Office Online email. So you can set very specific rules from senders to keywords. You can add different conditions. You can add actions and exceptions. I'm not going to get too far into that right now simply because not many people are going to do it. But if you like to organize your inbox, this is definitely something I recommend. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So now we can go ahead and get into drafting emails and sending emails. Okay, now to sending a new email, there is a couple ways to do this. The easiest, click the new email sign. Uh, the other way is click this drop down email message. You can also send calendar events from here or to a whole group. Say if you have a select group of people that you often email, you can set those rules in your email inbox. Or just go ahead and click new here. So this brings up your email window. I'm going to go ahead and send a example email to my coworker Sam. She is our graphic designer. I will click her. You see that drop down list of names come up. It makes things easier. You just have to type in a few of the first letters of their names. I'll add a subject, just hello, and then I'll say, how are you? And then from there, you can see at the bottom you have options to change your text, bold the font, italicize it, underline it, change the color. Uh, indent bullet. Uh, other things you can do from here, you can add an attachment, which I'll show you in a second. You can insert a picture straight into this text box here that'll be in line, and then you can format uh, more of the options of the text and then send emojis, which people love. And then here you can have um, other options, which is also available with these three dots up here. Save draft, show who it's from, check the names, which is a handy tool when sending to someone who, who's new. Uh, the system will check and make sure that it is a real email and it'll feel, fill it in like this bubble here. Uh, you can set the importance to high, normal, or low. You can switch it to plain text, more message options, and then check for accessibility issues. So from here, I'm going to attach a simple presentation that we have here. But before I do that, um, you can search your entire computer. This is the OneDrive, which works out of your Office 365 online. So these are the things that I have with me all the time because they are uh, online in the cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and select this presentation and click Next, and it will give me two options here. So I can attach as a OneDrive file. So I can send this to my graphic de designer and say, hey, maybe you could design this template a little better than me, which she probably can or I can attach it as a copy which she can just view and kind of look and go over with the OneDrive she can edit in real time and all that type of stuff and we can send it back and forth but I'm just gonna attach it as a copy right now uh, another couple options that we have here is a carbon copy so another person that um, maybe isn't directly involved with the email but you know about it a blind carbon copy 
so they can't see who the other senders are. I can add someone in here. I will actually add our other Sam in the office. She is our client manager. So they are both in here, and I will send this to them. Hopefully they like this wonderful email. You can also go from here, send, or discard if you don't want to work with it anymore. So I'll go ahead and click send. So that is how you send an email. Uh, I have one last thing to go over, and that is the search options here. You can search mail and people. So if I want to search for any emails from Sam, there's two in our office, I can either go from the top line, which is searching for keywords, or I can search from people. I'm just going to do this first, and it brings up this option on the side. And you can see that it brings up things maybe they just mentioned Sam in or that emails are exactly from Sam. Uh, it matches those up. And then I can search all folders, my inbox, my work inbox, different folders. I can search with attachments, without, select a date range, or I can select people. Um, so that's just a handy tool if you're looking for something in your inboxes or something that you sent out recently. So that really does it for the mail side of Office 365 Online. Now we're going to move over to Calendar. There's two ways you can do that. You can either click here and go back to your main dashboard. The easier way to do it is come down here and click this Calendar. Inside the Calendar section of Office 365, there's a lot that you can do. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker than the mail side because a lot of the stuff is the same works the same but first we can change the view of how you look at your calendar you can either do it by day work week which is the five week which is a seven day or the whole month I like the work week so we'll stay here for that um, and then we can go up to here you have the option of create new which is a calendar event you can send an email from here maybe saying hey I'm thinking about send it, setting up a meeting uh, so you can let the person know before you actually send the calendar request. You can send a birthday event. Um, you can add the calendar. Add a calendar, excuse me. So you can send, uh, set up secondary calendars. So I have a couple. I have a marketing one. I have a personal one. I have one that's actually untitled right now. So I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. Interesting calendars. This is kind of cool. This is, if you click here, Bing calendars that they have set up. So what's on TV that night? some basketball baseball you can set that up and manage it how you want share you can share your calendar with others you pick which one you want to share and then once I go here you can say who you want to send it to share and then you can set permissions so I can view all the or Ron can view all details of me um, and you can set this up depending on how you want people to see your calendar you can have them see just busy in sections you can have them see all details in your calendar that is up to you and then last you can print here so if I click print it'll pull up a screen and then I can select how I want it to be the work week just the day the whole month and then print from certain times so that is the layout of the land up here now we'll get into more of the calendars and how to set up the meetings. All right, now to set up meetings, there's really two ways you can do it. You can either come up here and click New, the drop down with the calendar event. Uh, you can send the email, or you can do a birthday event. Or you can come down here and simply click in here. If you do one click, it gives you this simple window, which is just an appointment. So say if it's something easy during the day, it's like remind yourself to send an email to whomever and then you can add a location or room if you need to or just do this and then you can click more details which you which will bring you up the big screen but I want to do it from here so I'm gonna go ahead and click new and this brings you up all of the details of the meeting so you set the title for the event you can add a location or a room um, it will remember rooms that are uh, used often so you can see the rooms that we have here our conference room so once you add those um, they will be remembered so you don't have to go in and type it every time then you can go down click when you want the meeting to start on what day at what time also the ending you can set it to a private meeting or an all-day meeting and then you come down here and if you want it to repeat you can select um, the op options that you want if you want it to be a reoccurring meeting. Um, you can also click what calendar you want it to save to. So say if you want it to be a personal event, you can have it saved just to your personal one. 
and then you can set reminders of when uh, you want your calendar to remind you when this event's going to happen. So a lot of the times it's just 15 minutes before, so you'll get a, a little box on the, the side of your computer that says, hey, you have a meeting in 15 minutes. Uh, and then you can select what people will see your calendar as while you're at this meeting. You can either have it as free, working elsewhere, tentative, busy, or away. And then you can also add another email reminder. So saying it'll send an email out to everyone that's attending the, the event. And then here, it's just like a normal email. This is usually used for setting the agenda, adding bullet points of what the meeting is going to entail. And then when you come up here, you can add people to the meeting. So you see it suggests um, people that I talk to often. So I can add them straight to the meeting. And then this comes up on the side, which is really handy. You can see when the people are free. So Sam has nothing on her schedule for the next three days, so we look pretty open. So I can go ahead and schedule that, but it is good use when there are people that you're looking to get into a meeting who have a lot of time upheld, so you can use the scheduling assistant to find the right time slot for them. And then you can also attach um, anything to the email, just like in, uh, excuse me, not the email, to the calendar event, uh, just like the email. So you click attach and it will bring up your OneDrive and then you can also go to computer files if you want to add a PDF or a Word document or a presentation along those lines. And then you can add charms, uh, you can categorize this, you can manage your categories from here, you can add different categories and all of that. So that is about it for the meeting section of calendars. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of here I will just discard this for now. So for the calendar side, those are really the basic things that you can do in here. Now we're going to go ahead and I'll move over to the people and we can talk about that for a little bit and some of the tasks and then we'll be done. All right, so this is the people side of Office 365. I got there by just this little icon down there. You can also go back to your dashboard and go to the people section there. So I only have six contacts in mine uh, simply because we use HubSpot as our software for marketing. So all of my contacts are actually in there. So these are just a few I have put in here to show you guys what it looks like. Um, you can send a message directly from here in an email. Uh, this is more an overview of your directory of what your contact list, lo list looks like. So this is really basic. I'm not going to get too much in the detail with this. Uh, you can um, add rooms and groups and all of that stuff from in here. Uh, so if I go up here, I can click um, new and I can create a contact. I can create a contact list or a group from in here. I can also manage my contacts. I can view their social networks, um, their Facebooks, their Twitters. I can import contacts, say if I have a CSV Excel file or I can export the contacts that I have from in here. So I'll just show you the example of how to add a new contact. So you come in here and you can see that you have all the basics of what you would need for a contact. You can fill all this out, first name, last name. Um, one other thing that I recommend within the email side of things, uh, when you receive a new email from someone, say that you don't know, you can hover over their name and right click and once you do that it'll bring up an option to save that email to contacts and it'll bring up this screen where you can fill in more information because most likely they won't the, their name won't be attached to it it will just be their email so you can fill in other things like their phone and where they work and address and all of that so this is really it for the people side I just wanted to give you a quick glance at that if you have any more questions on this I can answer them if you just send me an email and we can go over that a little deeper. So last but not least is tasks. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a quick easy task so you guys can see kind of what it's about. If I click new here, this brings up this window with a subject line and a due date. I'll just type um, send Sam an email tomorrow. Uh, click a due date of tomorrow. And then from there, you can show more details like priority. You can set as high, low, and normal. You can set um, time you want it to be done, a reminder, a percent of the work it done. And then you have a text box down here. So say I could draft up an email and 
post in here of maybe an idea of what I want to send to her tomorrow. So then I can go from here and click save. And then this is in my task pane now, so I can come down here and this is there. It's active, reminding me to send this tomorrow. So that's really what you can do in task. It's more of just an organization type deal. Uh, so that is really all of uh, what I'm going over today in Office 365. I hope that answers any questions you guys have going through the process. Also, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Once again, my email is alex, A-L-E-X, at omegacomputerservices.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this a lot. Also, if you would like to follow us on any of our social media, uh, I will give you guys links with that too. So we look forward to working with you in the future. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.